Um, meow. We are now recording. Oh, oh it doesn't um, give me a pop-up reminder that uh, our no notice that no, it does not. That's, you could just mean you could just see say saying some offensive ass shit, and I could just hot mic your ass, and then oh. boom, you'll never be able to run for president. Well, uh, I'm, I'm unmuted sure in already. Discord, by the way. Oh, I mean a quick oh. Google search of things i've looked for on google will show me that i'm definitely not ever going to run for president but with the comments you just made that i definitely recorded not only are we going to get canceled <laughs> you know so we all go down together we all mutually assured cancellation yeah that's the, that's what i operate on here <sighs> oh hey rob how's it going buddy hey Look at him jumping in, Rob. It's good to see you, buddy. Did y'all, did y'all get my order? Which is kind of Alan's order. <laughs> Not kind of, it definitely is. Probably. I, pro- I just haven't checked the Gmail. Actually, probably should actually do that. He yeah. says yes. So they're good. We're good. We're all fine here now. How are you? Okay. All right. It is time. Oh, okay. So well, if we need to work something else out, just let me know. I told him that if we had to get them shipped or something like that, that uh, oh, man. that um, we'd we'd coordinate that because I know you're doing most of the most of the work now, aren't you? That's uh, that's the saddest news I've heard all night, Rob. I mean, seventy five percent of the reason I go to JordanCon is to see you. Oh, a Vista print order was confirmed. Good. So no envelopes. Uh, you gotta choose one or the other. I get that. I uh, got you. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There is a part of me that is definitely honored that you chose WatCon over Jordan Con. <laughs> not that it's because of me, but right, right. It's not, not because of. <clears throat> totally right completely okay we don't have too much in emails uh oh except for um designy thingies oh yes um i'm needing if to, we can uh, work more on to get in good formats. i need well, to actually, look at no, we're already in the formats we yeah just i will prove or deny i will look at that this week i apologize rob tell your wife i'm sorry new creations by jen is amazing you guys are amazing <laughs> And I apologize for dragging my feet on that. I will get back to you ASAP. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you do. And I'm leaving this in. I'm not even going to edit it out. That's what's going to happen. Everybody's going to know that we talk to Rob. (laughs) Get on our level. (laughs) We get to talk to Rob. Of course, when I'm sober, when I'm sober editing, I might change my mind on that sober josh (laughs) i need you to just take a look at this for a second okay look at this objectively because drunk josh is in love with it and wants to keep all of it welcome to another episode of the black tower podcast it's time once again for you to line up and uh receive your weekly dose of taint for all of you out there who uh are listening I am Josh, your Sorobon Mahal. And I am Andrew, your Bajan Mahal. And our illustrious, infamous Amon Kamahal, Daniel, is uh, still out and about in the field. Though word says the construction of the new satellite Black Tower site is going phenomenally. So, yes. um, uh, barring any crazy, wacky changes or antics or, you know, uh, another breaking of the world. 
You should be back with uh, us. Uh, knock on wood, cross your yeah. fingers. Be back with us next Tuesday. Uh, it's clean, guys. Tuesday I promise. of 2023. Yeah, that's right. Hey, happy new year, everyone. 2023 is going to be an awesome year. I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck. I'm saying it right now. 2023 is going to be awesome. All uh-huh. y'all can stop getting all worried about me jinxing it by saying so. I'm saying it. Well, I mean, by the time this episode goes live, Jordan Khan is just over four months away. Yep. Um, That's right. Watt Khan is just over seven, well, barely just over seven months away. Yep. So, and if that's and, not uh, enough to make you happy, come on. And WatCon this year is actually on my birthday. That's great. So that'll be fun. That is fun. That's going to be awesome. So, um, we are the Black Tower Podcast. As you know, we are a Wheel of Time podcast. I actually had to answer that question for people on TikTok uh, over the last couple of weeks. I had made a response video to one of uh, Critter's videos, and Critter is naturally a superstar um, who graces us with their presence every once in a while. And uh, when I made a TikTok video stitched off of one of her videos, uh, it brought in a lot of viewership. And a lot of people were like, what is this, Black Tower? And some guy was like, oh, it's from Stephen King. It's a book by Stephen King. And another guy was like, Black Tower? Tower? what's this and so i had to answer a lot of questions so if any of you were on tiktok and you found us by this please do not take offense uh that's not me making fun of you that's me just telling the story and you guys asked sincerely and honestly and was like what the hell is this and i answered i think i got to all your answers i'll check after this and we ask ourselves yes. that same question every day we do <laughs> wasn't it Stephen yes. just called the dark power not the black tower i thought he had a black or was it know. called the black tower um yeah it was just the dark tower because every time you look up black tower like especially in image searches you get the dark tower yeah that's what it is i think i one of these days will be famous enough to sideline that there and then there black is black tower, tower wine. wine yep that is true which is uh what whatever what i do um whenever stuff just annoys me <laughs> Not your average that's, every day. That's like wine. half that's of our episodes wine. is Black Tower wine. <laughs> oh, it really grinds my gears. <laughs> um, you know what really sheathes my sword? Nice. Oh, that actually sounds like it might be a good thing. That's. I was about to say that you got to be careful with that one. Um, lost my train of thought. All right. Uh, oh, if you, you don't want to you. lose your train of thought. Ha! Segwayed. If you want something to help you focus, something to give you energy, something that tastes great too, to go talk to our good friend at Dubby, who is declaring war on big energy, and which would be the energy drink companies, not like you know utilities. Um, but no, uh, he's got. It's actually some really good stuff. Um, I mean, they're responsible for the got buying gas prices. <laughs> it tastes real good it it'll give you a nice little pep little pickup that you want it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it so you don't get that shakes or crash or anything like that it's really nice i don't think it has any sugar in it no sugar no artificial flavors oh, bam even better no preservatives. and they got a couple new flavors out as well that we haven't tried yet that we uh we need yeah. to know i've got three of the flavors and i love each one of them especially the uh the one that i just thought of i believe was the the sweet tea yes Oh yeah, that the, was uh, great. Southern near my heart. Yeah, so they're they're pretty good. Um, they got some cool shaker bottles on there too. If you're if you're an yep. anime fan, or if you just like the art style, or if just a voluptuous individual in a bikini top is uh is your bag, then there you go. Right Which there on Dubby. could they be anyone's bag. Like yeah. really, truthfully. Yeah. So get yourself um, some energy, get something to pep you up in these winter nights as the new year comes around, something that'll help you, uh, even though you probably, you definitely won't get it in time for New Year's. If you had gotten it earlier, you could have had it for New Year's and help you stay up a little bit longer. And uh, <sighs> I have on rare occasion mixed it with some uh, adult style beverages and uh, not bad, not bad. It, it is, it, though it is not, uh, 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 
See, I can't even think of words right now. Words. I can't word right now. Though it is not recommended by the manufacturer. Yeah. It is still a fun thing to do. But which, to be fair, uh, if you look on the side of a Red Bull can, it says not intended for use with alcohol. Yeah. And you but know, the egg we still have all of our forgot that was actually what that drink is actually called. It's just Red Bull and vodka. Oh yeah, vodka Red Bull. Doesn't have a fancy cool name. That, I, think I think that says a lot it. about who we are as people, Andrew. I'm over here like Jaeger bombs, and you're over here like vodka Red Bull, and I'm like, I think we just told on ourselves oh, a little bit. No, my, my my favorite is the uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, Irish CB. Oh yeah, you can't say that anymore. Yeah, but that's that's different ingredients though. That's uh, oh yeah, Jameson, Bailey's, and Guinness. That's good stuff. I'm anyway, that than I am any of the other stuff. This is what happens when we're drunk and we do an episode. Did you know that uh, Jaeger was initially meant to be like a digestive aid, not actually like a, a shooter drink? You were meant to sip it after dinner well, to help in digestion. That's why it hangs around so long. Most liquors were intended for medicinal use. Shut up. I mean, I know that's how absinthe was made because of the wormwood. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so. Anyway, we're not talking about it. We're not just a bunch of frat boys talking about alcohol all night. That's not us. I mean, we're we could do another 13 minutes on it. We have 23 serious podcasters, professionally delightfully unprofessional. Hey, don't you um, see this? We have separate microphones. We're, we're professional. Taint. We're dispense, we dispense the taint, which that's the starter right there. That's going to go in oh, this week. The taint song. Taint sauce, taint sauce 2.0. Oh, does That's taint watch start happening. next week? Yes, I think. Ooh. It's it, within the next couple of weeks. It's starting. It's doing the thing. Just keep an eye on the TikTok. If it started, That's it's, right. on the, it's on the it's Make on sure the you're make tape. sure you subscribe to our TikTok. That's where but the, anyway, that's where the gold is. Something else that you should subscribe to is not being spoiled when you don't want to be. Ooh, We're gonna go ahead and roll on that spoiler condom so that way if you're not ready for this episode you can bookmark it and it can come back later whenever you're ready so definitely is, save this one this is going to be a good one yeah, it should be fun but you know what this spoiler warning is also super fun um, listen to the spoiler warning don't leave until after the spoiler warning as i look to make sure i go to hit the right one because i feel like i just put <laughs> this one the other day all right anyway here it is there a spoiler warning this is your official spoiler warning this episode contains spoilers for all 14 books and the prequel. If you are still listening and you haven't read all these, you want to be spoiled, don't you? Mm -hmm. You crave it. Getting spoiled without putting in the work? Well, get ready. Here it comes. I'm going to edit that part out on the audio track so that I don't ruin her absolutely beautiful intro. Everybody, go check out North Harbor Podcast because they're amazing. Go do the thing. They're awesome. <clears throat> so tonight, we're talking about uh, Luz Theron. Luz Theron Telemann. Now, uh, we've got a bit of a thing here. So we want to talk about like his his role, like understanding who he was in the Age of Legends. Um, this isn't really a deep dive into him as a character. It's more of, I guess, I guess a good way to put it would be to understand how his role was in the Age of Legends and how that role evolved into the modern story. If we get that far, I mean, I, I think we will because we know a lot about Luz Theron, but. I think a lot of what we know about Luz Theron is like titles and events, but we don't right. know a lot about what the titles are. Like, we we don't we don't necessarily know, or I mean, we know broadly what like right. the nine rods of dominion. Well, and that that's that's part of the re that's part of the issue we have with him is because he was such a big figure in the Age of Legends, you know. Uh, obviously with such a large historical impact that we get a lot of lore surviving through the age through the years but a lot of it just kind of asks 
you know, it kind of brings up more questions than answers. Yeah, I mean, so let's 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 just start at I guess at the beginning of, of what we know, not necessarily at the, the beginning of the book, but <clears throat> so Louis there and Telamon, um, which during this age having three names was a big deal. It means that uh, it means that you were very accomplished during the age of like. Um, so the fact that he had three names, Luz, there, and Telamon, um, as you read further in the books, obviously becomes a very strong indicator of like, this wasn't just like a guy. This was like right. the guy or one of the guys. Um, and he was essentially the boss um, alongside the, the Tamerlan, of course, because um, it was a, a kind of binary system. Right. But he was he he was the Mac Daddy, I suppose, would be uh what the kids would call it these days. <laughs> the kids called it in the nineties. <laughs> well, I'm a nineties baby, so close enough. Would, um, now here's so, the important question though. Would this Mac Daddy make you want to jump jump? I mean, he made a lot of his family jump jump. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what happened with Luce there, and uh, it's I immediately the regret start interrupting you. <laughs> oh no, no. I, I welcome it. Um, so very quickly in the books, we learned that uh, Luce there was not only like the guy, um, not the Spike Kids three everything, but the things didn't necessarily work out for him in the end. We get a very jarring kind of reveal of Luz Theron. And a lot of these titles that I was talking about earlier, these things that we know about Luz Theron, but we don't really know what they necessarily mean, we get from Ishmael and the prologue of Eye of the World. You know, right. he, got, he gives this whole monologue about how, you know, you wore the ring of Tamerlan, you could summon the nine rods of dominion, you stood, a, you know, a, a, the center of the hall of servants or top the hall of servants or whatever. Like, all these things that sound like titles which another spoiler warning get used to that with some of the characters <laughs> like, yeah well um, that's that's as one of our spoiler warnings says is finding out you have more titles than actual names and it's just yeah. yep shout out to the registered nerd mm -hmm. um so lewis Aaron has all these titles in the the age of legend um and for the longest time at least in the fandom um, and probably like even in the world before I guess they found historical record or whatever. Whenever we thought about the nine rods of dominion, uh, the name sounds like a set of Angriol. Um, and given like um, Ishmael's uh, kind of emphasis on them, you'd think they were fairly powerful. Um, but it actually turns out that is the name of the, go the regional governors during the age of legend. Um, so you had nine regional governors uh, right. that Louis Theron could say, hey, come here. So and which essentially made him like Speaker of the House kind of thing. Like, hey, yeah. I need you. But with more, I guess, more of an immediate sort of responsibility. Like, instead of being like, hey, I'm scheduling a meeting for next week, we are led to believe that he could be like, I need you all to be here right now so that we can discuss whatever. Yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing that <clears throat> the other thing that Ishmael mentions is that he wore the the uh, the ring of Tamerlan. Um, so in the books, this was um, legendary mythical ring worn by the leader of the Aes Sedai. Time Luz Aaron was the leader of the Aes Sedai. He might not have been like the leader of the world but he was definitely the leader of the Aes Sedai right um we have no idea who else may have worn it uh we don't know if it was any kind of Angriol though many stories portray it as some form either just the plain Angriol, Sa Angriol or Ter Angriol but we're not sure um but that the ring might have been named after the first person who learned how to tap into the true source and channel um but again, we have no idea. Um, yeah, it, it, when we get to the on. point of the story that we get to, we just know Ring of Tamerlan, ooh, big deal. 
like it, it was and I, I don't mean that sarcastically i mean like no it was actually a big deal oh this is the okay i actually just found uh Isabel's quote or elon morin but it says uh elon morin grimaced look at you he said scornfully once you stood first among the servants once you wore the ring of tamerlan and sat in the high seat once you summoned the nine rods of dominion now look at you you're just right. starting the book series and there's all these titles and accolades that you're like, I don't even know what the hell's going on yet. And what, <laughs> what is the high seat? Nine you know rods of, of? of domination. Like what? Do you know what the the nine dominatrix rods. What? That's right. Oh, Hey, that's a different book. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you know, it reminds me of like when you play like a video game and you, you've got like, all these superpowers and abilities and i'm and every single time that should be a red flag but it's not you're like oh this is so cool i'm gonna do a hundred thousand damage to the boss and then the boss kills you and you're like oh that wasn't <laughs> really the start of the game damn it yeah that's what it kind of reminds me of because it's like you've got lose theron at the height of his power and you're like wow this guy's important oh no he's not he's dead but now you've got this entire world of what the hell was that yeah uh, i really i really we, like that we get all this all this thing about how incredible you are you are so amazing so incredible from this also other guy who's talking to him like he doesn't give a shit about all those titles and you're just kind of like it's a mind fuck what does sure. this even mean <laughs> what what do these words mean and <laughs> Uh, it it takes a while to figure out um and i, I think some of it might have also been expounded on more in uh in origins of the wheel of time which i still gotta read um uh, uh, i don't think so i don't know i i finished it and i don't i'm not recalling anything being in there but i did read it in like a one-stop shop like yeah, because I couldn't put it down, and I was driving, and it was awesome, and I love it. So what? I would have to go what back. Mean you couldn't put it down, and you were driving. Oh, you had the audio book. Oh, okay. <laughs> couldn't put it down. The steering wheel couldn't put it down. That would have been unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, but no, but there's yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of exposition. It's very very concentrated in that initial exchange. Just like the um, tank yeah and then you as the reader we get to uh, the world concentrate on my team and we're like oh, yeah what the fuck? <laughs> and we're like yes. what the fuck was all that like what the hell was that what is it what, what's going on right now and who, who the fuck is rand i don't care yeah um so lewis darren is famous for being the uh, as strong of a male chandler as there could be we don't know if that's actually accurate or if it's just what the third age thought. We do know that Chandlers in the third age are weaker than Chandlers in the second age, given the Forsaken. Um, and that's, I mean, even though it doesn't actually seem to come into action, doesn't seem to ever actually matter. That's the thing. If they're, if, they're, if they're so much weaker, bar the exceptions of like Elaine and Egwene and Avienda and Nynaeve right. and Rand. Why is it not a bigger issue? Like we see links of like maybe one, two, or three here and there, but it honestly is never that big of an issue. The knowledge gap uh, between the Forsaken or the Chosen and modern day Chandlers is never really an issue. Uh, the huh. difference in power and channeling ability is never really an issue. Well, and we kind of talked about this at which, okay, the, the difference in power we can have a whole conversation about that. So maybe put that on the schedule because I've got great examples for that. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see if the red label was a mistake here. I'm, I'm not even done with the, uh, the art bag. I'm just, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this. This is fucking treat. Oh, my language. Oh my, <laughs> what have I done? Oh. Oh, look at that. We got village mattresses in here with us. Yeah. yeah. Hey, buddy. Long time no see. You know what that, you know what that means? When a village mattress shows up to your recording session, it is a, a recording session. Reception. It heralds Reception. a good night's rest. So. 
Is that true? Put it in the live chat if that's true. Uh, that would be my my official review. Maybe Village matches like... heralds a good night's rest. All right, or a good think, day's rest if you work. I think that's different. canon. I think that's canon now. Yeah, yeah. Gateway <laughs> to Teleron. <Reality. laughs> yes, <laughs> I am the Mobius ring necklace. That's perfect. That's that you can't top that. Not with another um, mattress. What? <laughs> Uh, so I did put the power differences on the on the schedules. If you like the end of oh February. good, but I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna put in there anyway. an example. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so loose there. Um, most notable during the Age of Legends for being the head honcho, the most powerful Chandler, uh, second only or seconded by um, Ishmael or Elon. Uh, and then the Mandred, I think we're all roughly around the same. Uh, there were some female counterparts around the same too. Um, but he was considered to be as strong as a male Chandler could ever possibly hope to be. Uh, and again, we don't know if that's actually true or if that's just what the third age thought, um, which is what gave rise to the idea about talking about power level differences between Age of Legends and third age, which we'll do sometime after we celebrate loving people, apparently. Um, but something else he is famous for hmm. is what we see in the pro in, unfold in the prologue. Um, and it is the continuing kind of theme behind Lou Theron's interactions with Rand, um, or what looks to be Lou Theron's interactions with Rand. Spoiler warning, they're not actually Lou Theron interacting with Rand. Um, but he earns the name Kenslayer for doing what the name suggests. Um, after the, the assault on Shao Ghul in a semi-failed, uh, I would consider it like 80% failed attempt to seal the, the, the Dark One's prison, there's, of course, the counterstroke that immediately puts a taint on Sidene and drives Luce Theron and his uh, 99 right. companions uh, insane instantaneously. Uh, Luce Theron actually doesn't, doesn't wreak that much damage on the world as a whole, but he goes home. Yeah. Uh, I would say he never does. But that, that might also be another, might another, be another. topic. Let's, right. let's make sure that one's on the schedule. Who calls the most damage in the breaking? <laughs> or something like that. Um, I, I, got I might have receipts for that. Let me not say I do, and I might forget. Um, Anyway, he goes home, um, and if you're familiar with the story, uh, the, the tragedy of Chris Benoit, um, he does that. He uh, unalives anybody that shares even a drop of his blood is what the story says, earning himself the moniker Kinslayer, um, and that's when we have Ishmael come in or Elon comes in and gives the whole speech about, oh, you could summon the nine rods of Dominion and shove them up your ass or something, whatever he said. Um, <laughs> all night at the same time. Yeah, all night at the same time. Right, <laughs> shove them right in your ring of you, Tamerlan. You were, you were. So <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sure of it. Now we've got the Wheel of Time porno movie. And I, I, I think we need to switch back. Oh, yeah. We just need to wait for like season three to get halfway done and just going to be out there. Coming this Rule summer, 34. Johnny Sins is loose there in Telemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's another job from the ad. Not only was he an astronaut, but he uh, sat on the high seat. He was first amongst the servants. I don't want to see him summon the nine okay. rods of Dominic. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Those are movies um, I don't want to watch. <laughs> yeah. Or it's just morbid curiosity. Um, yeah, Chris Benoit, uh, WWE wrestler that uh, unalived the, his whole family and then himself. Uh, very tragic story, actually. Very sad. Yes. Um, trying to find more like YouTube friendly ways of saying what kind of stuff. Yeah. Happened. Well, um, it, it, and unfortunately, you know, there isn't really a nice way of saying that. And it's because it's a tragedy. It's because it's a bad thing. It's because there's no way to say it that isn't saying it like what it is, which is a very horrific, bad thing. And in this particular case, 
Luz Theron Telamon, Luz Theron Kinslayer, committed this atrocious act against his family at a time in which war had been unknown for hundreds of years until the War of Power, which, if I understand correctly, was a very, like, recent, you had a very short amount of time in the War of Power. Things escalated very, very quickly. And so a lot of the reason that the forces of the shadow were overwhelming the forces of the light is because they were willing to do really dark shit in order to win. And the forces of the light... At least a couple... A couple really. years. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have... Because Luz Theron defeats the Mandred after three three to three and a half years into the War of Power. But I don't think right. it was too long after that that the Mandred led the strike at the construction sites for the Choden Call. Right. To try to distract from the attacks on the Choden Call, Luz Theron led the strike directly at Shalgul. Right. And, and the thing, the, the issue we run into there is, once again, the forces of the light didn't really have a way to deal with them other than massive overwhelming power. Like, we don't, they we don't know even. what to do. Um, <clears throat> and so... Blue's there and standing there with his ugly oh, yoga pants and a latte. People, I literally can't do <laughs> People were so shocked by what he did that they branded him Kinslayer and that's the moniker that survived so many years because what he did was obviously terrible, horrible, bad. It's not a good thing. It's never a good thing in any age. But when we get to the third age, that's a thing that we hear about happening. That's, you know, some dude went crazy, it happened. I mean, even... Even in this show, we have examples of people who have done that. The so, song. Yeah. Palm's song about the man who can't forget. We all about Kinsley. And, and that was the thing. And, and, and the difference between, Damn you know, imagine song. waking up in a world in which those things just didn't happen. Those things just weren't a part of society. Like society had begun, had, had accomplished this Star Trek esque happiness utopia. And uh, yeah, so it, it, it becomes a double tragedy in my mind, or in my opinion, because well, it's to, one of those to do something like, like that would be horrible, but to do something like that in a place in which people can't even understand why, what, you know, how would you even do that, I think yeah. kind of makes it a bigger thing, a bigger deal. Well, it's one of those things, too. Um... Uh, like uh, like he who comes with wine just said in the live chat, um, all the good he did, Dunzo immediately, because um, people will forever remember the bad things that you've done. Uh, the right. human brain is actually uh, seems to be at least I'm not an expert, so I'm going to say seems to be hardwired for negativity for bad news. That's why bad news sells so well. Yes, because the human brain looks for it, accepts it craves it even we have and so that's what becomes stories how look at how many stories they have of all the atrocities all the evil things that happened during the war of power during the trollic wars yes. during the il wars it's all these stories of death and blood and gore and sadness with the occasional sprinkle of hey you know good things actually happen now right to be fair to be fair if you've done a lot of good things and then you turn around and you kind of murk your entire family it's gonna kind of stand out like I, yeah you get it you know um, it's it's interesting you say about the mind being hardwired to for for negativity or something like that we actually have the service industry to thank for this um because the service industry did a big huge study and said you know we need to know why some of our uh hotels are more successful oh that is a shirt idea sorry <laughs> nobody remembers parentes and everyone knows oh, that is that would be a dope shirt okay yeah i like that i'm gonna put that in the uh, we're stealing that <laughs> uh how much are the rights to that idea <laughs> go for it okay never mind i retract that never mind we got it right there i'm also we have documented consent um 
So the thing was uh one t-shirt deal. You got they it. wanted to know there it is. Boom. Sold. They wanted to know what if uh what you know if they've got a hotel of 500 rooms and another hotel of 500 rooms, why can they sell the exact same number of rooms? And why is one considered more successful than the other? Why does one have better ratings than the other? Like what's going on with that? And they led this huge study to find out why, what the difference was. And what they found out is that one hotel said, oh yeah, we, we make sure the beds are made. We make sure everything is perfect. We make sure service is perfect from start to finish. Their experience is seamless and beautiful and wonderful. And the, the, the service industry went, okay, but this is what we want. Like, why are you the less successful hotel? So they went to the other hotel to find out what they were doing differently. And they were like, oh, um, it's not that we're doing it on purpose, but we had some, some problems with some of the room service issues. And so when they complained about those issues, we just solved them really, really quickly. Um, we offered you know, some fair compensation and we went about our day and I guess that really stuck out because they left us a five-star review on you know, whatever. And the service industry found that again and again and again, overwhelmingly the more successful hotels were people who could take complaints or issues handle them quickly and efficiently and make the client happy again in that moment and so they started doing this study where they they, they started doing this whole like okay what if we do a couple of bad things on purpose but then fix them really really quickly and called it a day that's why when you go to vegas if you complain that there was bugs in your room like they'll just comp the room they won't they'll just comp the room they'll just be like hey you because your brain will say hey yeah there were bugs in the room but they gave me the room for free and the customer service was really awesome and it'll completely short circuit the fact that there were goddamn bugs in your room <laughs> based on a true story by the way yeah i mean well it's it's weird, like the human brain hardwired for negativity, but also it's, it seems like hardwired, hardwired to make like exceptions or mm -hmm. to make excuses or to make allowances for things. Well, as you long want to rationalize as there's what a happened. perceived like gain. Yeah. You need, you need, you need, you need to know that what happened makes sense. Why did this happen? Oh, uh, the hotel industry told me it happened because there was a mistake on our part. We're really sorry. Here's 50 bucks and a free buffet. Oh, well, hey, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate that. And then you move around your and you and what you remember is, damn, those guys were really nice. They just took care of the issue. They took ownership. Boom. That was it. That was done. God, you know what? Five-star review. You guys are really great. Might have been your fault. <laughs> might, might have been your issue the whole time yeah, yeah you never know and there's there's people that prey on that um as there well are. as just you know it, it happens right but anyway um back to loose there um so yeah that's that's kind of what he is known for so his role in the age of legends he was he was the, the kind of central leader he was at the top of the packing order especially uh, namely amongst the Aes Sedai um he's going to be at least uh, equivalent in terms of governance or government style leadership um kind of ruling the world in this time of peace and paradise well, moving into a time of peril and, and war and and if we look up the hall of the servants the hall of servants we obviously we don't get a lot of uh information about them but it was an organization that sort of had oversight mm -hmm. over the Aes Sedai or at least had sort of leadership rules roles alongside the Aes Sedai and for Luz Theron to be leader of both the Aes Sedai and to stand first among all the servants kind of feels like a big deal like, I feel like that's something that shouldn't be allowed to happen, but they just love this guy so much that they were like, you know what? He's it. He's in charge. Yeah. That was probably the, the precursor to, at least in the books, the modern hall in the White Tower. Could be. Could be. So, whereas 
the hall of servants was as the need rose um like you said um and in the white tower it's more of like a, a sitter for the hall um being more consistent even though right yeah um but so his role in in the story um i mentioned it earlier reading the books for the vast majority of the books it really feels like like rand is sharing his his headspace with another soul um it really does feel like rand is having actual conversations with Luz there with his previous self um now robert jordan being such a fan of, of physics um and, and metaphysics and, and the way the universe and, and, and the world works as i look back on it now it makes so much sense that i sh that, you sh that we should have been able to pick up on it and there, i'm sure there were people that picked up on it earlier that that's not actually what's happening because if rand is the dragon soul reborn how can the other entity actually exist and communicate with him if it's been reborn right um so what we find out uh, what you might extrapolate through reading or through looking at blog posts, wherever, is that the voice of Luz Theron that Rand hears is actually a symptom of Rand not fully accepting his his reborn status as the dragon reborn. Right. Well, not it was accepting that's who he is. Yeah, it was the taint using that uh, emotional uh, conflict to manifest a piece that could help uh increase the divide there and break the mind eventually because that's well, I mean, what the taint does yeah well i mean i it was a mix of both because Rand himself kind of sectioned that part of himself off and that's yes. going to intrinsically cause something uh, similar to like did um or schizophrenia or something, something of that nature and the taint only or at least the way i read it the taint exacerbated the issue Right. Tank was able to latch on to that existing uh, issue or vulnerability and magnify it. Um, so I think the taint is fully responsible for Rand feeling like Luz Theron took control and seized the source, you know, because there is a point where Luz Theron seizes Sidene from him. Yes. Um, and he's like, oh, I can't get it back. Um, I definitely think that that was more taint than anything else, but you know, the Tate exploits issues and weaknesses that already exist. Um, kind of like the dark side. Kind of. Kind of. So. But I, it's interesting because Lou Theron as a plot device provides us a ton of detail and insight um, and to some degree exposition um, of different things because Rand, like, he'll not, I mean, he's recalling it from a past life, but he recalls it in the form of Luz Theron speaking about it uh, to him. So he thinks that, you know, it's it's the madman telling him what's going on. Um, and then right. later on, after after Rand has his come to himself moment, it's I don't, not really a come to Jesus <laughs> moment if you are the Messiah figure. Um, come, come to dragon? Come yeah, to dragon? Come to maybe? dragon moment. Uh, Ileana. Which is kind of what he does, though. He goes to Dragon Mouth. That's true. I mean, that's, oh. that's kind of the it's kind of the thing. It's kind of exactly it. Yeah. Um. Because at that point, then he's like, "Oh, I've done this before. I remember all of this stuff from my past lives." Right. Um, whereas prior to then, it's you know he doesn't know how he creates you know the the arrows of fire or the death gates or the blossoms of fire and that kind of stuff. He's it's like, almost like a survival instinct, yeah. maybe yeah so which you know it actually kind of gives me uh tyler durden vibes if i'm being honest from fight club i don't know if you guys ever like read the book or watched the movie but in the movie like tyler durden was this fictional imagination character who was just really good at everything and i can't even remember the main character's name but he was uh every 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 uh personal sort of uh 
deficiency he saw in himself. Tyler Durden was this hero who was hyper good at everything he saw bad about himself. And really what you find out is that, oh, no, Tyler Durden's not a different person. It's a psychosis that he had created another person giving himself permission to do the things that he really, really wants to do. And then retreating back into his own personality to say, hey, cool, I'm still my own person. And I feel like that's a lot of what Rand does, to be honest, because you've got access to memories and knowledge and things that the dragon has knowledge to. And then Rand is going, okay, but at what cost? I have to admit that I'm this terrifying character from history who we don't know if he's going to save the world or not. And in the end, spoiler alert, I die. I don't necessarily know that I want to be a part of this. And so it, it creates that conflict that the taint sort of gets in there and says, yes, yes, yes. Feed, feed your, your inefficiencies, feed that, that conflict. Well, it's interesting too, because Brand spends so much time focusing on the fact that he's like, I'm going to die. I must die. My blood must be shed on the rocks of Shao right. And he does this really good job. And, and it makes me think uh, it's, it's a good harken back to uh, the people with, um, with depression or high functioning depression or just functional depression, where to the outside world, everything he says and does says, I'm good. I'm ready. I got it under control. Fine. And then he gets in these like these moments where he's alone or he's, you know, fighting uh, the Forsaken or something like that. And we get to see that like he's the exact opposite. He doesn't have anything under control. He's not fine. He doesn't know what he's doing Um, and he's fighting it. And a lot of times that comes in the form of him fighting Lou Theron. Um, And it just progressively gets worse and worse and worse. Um trying to think of one of the one of the moments like he, he has to fight the urge to channel and kill Tyene so many times and right. it's all immensely for him Lou Saren screaming at him clawing for Sidene saying you've right. got to kill this guy um, well, and well because once again it is access to memories that all men are tainted and will go crazy and kill everything you need to put a stop to this which is a fair thing to say. But once again, Rand knew that was the case and went acted against that because all hands were needed at the last battle. And so you had another sort of aspect of that personality that he didn't want to accept being fed into this fake imaginary loose Theron. Well, he also thought that it was truly the, the ravings of a mad man. Yes. In his head. Um, and I, I love because like it's 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 read and talked about in the fandom, um, both seriously, but also as a, as a moment of, of comedy, because there's a moment where Rand is having this pseudo conversation in his head with Luce Theron, and Luce Theron's voice tells him, "I wouldn't mind you being in my head if you weren't so clearly mad," and it causes Rand like an immediate pause, like he goes like excuse me bitch what like you're the crazy one but you know it's kind of like you know well the crazy guy just called me crazy like what does yeah. that mean you, you, you know get it's, these it's like, like it's like you know the the the, the town lush <laughs> calling you a drunk like excuse me <laughs> what like it's it's either they're crazy or whatever's going on with you is really bad right well and in the you know, it, it causes some really interesting mental gymnastics too, right? To be like talking to a voice in your head. First off, we're suspending disbelief there. Second off, when the voice starts asking you questions, when the voice starts making demands of you, when the voice starts telling you, no, you're not, you're, you're wrong on that. This is how it is. And the voice is right. That's scary. <laughs> that's terrifying. And uh, I, 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 to keep it into like the subject of, of being loose there and, and his role and impact in the world here, I love this because, again, Rand is loose there. The voice in his head is madness. 
Like we need to understand that. And I, I love that sort of the, 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 the journey that Rand goes on to, to reconcile with this sort of insanity. And once again, come to be the person that he needs to be at the last battle. Did that make well, sense? He almost there? retraces Luz Theron's step, right? Yeah. Because Luz Theron had to do all this work and build up to being the guy. Mm -hmm. But Rand has the additional benefit of 3,000-ish years of prophecy about him. You right. know, that, that makes people all over the world, like whether they actually are loyal to him or not, as we see with so many of the High Lords from, from here, um, backstabby motherfucker. Right. Um, but he, he walks into a town and people see who he is and they immediately say, yep, my Lord Dragon, whatever you need, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord. Um, or, so he gets, fuck this guy, we need to kill him because mm -mm, yeah. we're not ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, but especially like later on, whenever he's traveling with this accoutrement of, of Aiel warriors, and he's got some some Karina with him, and he's got some Saldans, he's got all these different, you know, uh warriors that are kind of traveling with him. And he's got Aes Sedai and and all this other going on. I, I mean it rightfully so, it carries a ton of weight what he travels with. Right. Um, and, and the whole time you got loose iron in the back of his head. Or, or you guys know what we mean when we say loose there and we you know it's not yeah. actually um he's got loose there in the back of his head feeding him so much information and a lot of it sounds absurd at first but right. you start getting these these nuggets of, of true wisdom of actual help that that come through that shine through and we start to see what looks to be Rand and Luz Theron having a, a more cordial relationship in his head. Um, and that's when we start seeing not quite the big explosion of Rand figuring out and knowing how to do all this stuff with the, with the one power, but he starts learning how to do more. And he trusts more in his body just doing things. And it's, which I a would lot of say, it is attributed to Luz Theron. Which I would actually say is a step in the wrong direction. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I see that as a step in the wrong direction because if you, if you're, if you're succumbing to the voice of a madman inside your head, or, you know, when the insanity starts to look sane, you have to start asking a lot of questions. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe that's the time to get some help. Um, and of course, the problem is, is once again, you know, Luz Theron was right. Well, the voice was right about just enough to keep Rand listening. Rand's own, Rand, Rand's own insecurities, oof, words, were enough to keep him skeptical, but his situation was desperate enough that he was like, oh, I, I, Mm, this is sounding more and more like something I should be looking at. And we see this is this is where uh God, I can't remember the name. Batron's Nat Natron's Borough. Natron's Borough. <laughs> uh, okay. This is where we see the, the conclusions. Those are the sort of conclusions that he came to while listening to the ramblings of insanity inside his head. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it serves to add another reason as to why he feels that he needs to be, you know, stone. I need to be harder than stone. I need to be steel. Right. I need to be harder than steel. I must be Quindiar. Right. Um, which I don't know why you would go to Quindiar in an era where you're literally watching Quindiar like flake apart in your hands. Right. Like, whatever. Do you? Um, <clears throat> but he he goes through all of this, and he he bounces back and forth at, at some points between Luz Theron is my only friend, and going wildly in the opposite direction of I, I have to ignore this 
this voice. I have to ignore Luz Darren. And it's like he's fighting between uh, points of lucidity where he's like, I, I know this isn't right. Um, and then other times he's just, he's just completely lost and taken uh, by the absolute uh, taint and uh, madness, both taint-induced and non-taint-induced insanity in his own head. But for us, as the readers, Lou Theron does a lot to introduce us to, to new concepts, new weaves, um, even though it is, yes, actually ran. Um, it all is given to us, the readers, through the lens of Lou Theron. Um, we, again, we get the arrows of fire, we get the death gates, we get the blossoms of fire. Um, and then in conjunction with Asmodian, there's uh, gateways that are relearned. Skimming, I think, Brand gets from quote unquote Lou Theron. Yeah. Um, it's well, yeah. and and that's what I was just saying that there, he gets enough, just enough to keep feeding into this um, sort of thing. So you've got Lou Theron playing a very, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it another. Uh, I'm gonna do another metaphor here. It's it's almost like Mace Windu and his use of the dark side and the light side of the force. For those of you super Star Wars nerds who get in there, Mace Windu, the part of the reason he is in the Jedi Council is because he uses a form of lightsaber battle combat that utilizes the dark side. And a lot of people, and, and he has to fight to not fall to the dark side every single time he gets into a lightsaber fight. Look it up. It's really, really cool. Um, and it's that is actually... to be kept alive. One of the things that we learned was that Mace Windu actually overpowered Sheev Palpatine. That was not a feint on his part. It was not him pretending to lose to Mace Windu. He was actually losing to Mace Windu. And Mace Windu was about to murk the hell out of him when Anakin came in and saved him. So what I see in this bit of the story is that Rand is doing the same kind of thing where he's playing into the madness a little bit to get what he needs in the moment, but at the cost of uh, so much in the future. And lucky that he, he realizes what's happening and yeah, it, is able to make that correction uh, i would posit that we get to see an example of the, the loose there and voice in rand's head being a boon rather than a burden when he is captured by the elida tower isodot because rand goes to a very dark place mint and yes he goes to that dark place with loose there but he firmly believes he has somebody to talk to he firmly believes he has a companion. He firmly right. feels and believes like he is not alone in that situation. And he already comes out of the box that version of Darth Rand. Imagine how brutal Rand would have been coming out of the box if he had nothing in his head, if he felt like he was truly alone yes. by himself. Because then you would have had, well, it would have been one of two things. He would have come out completely broken and useless for a while. Um like Kirito in what season four of Sword Art Online because they have to keep going with Sword Art Online instead of letting it stop when it was good. They can just let it stop. Yeah. Um, or he comes out absolutely cold, dead, doesn't care. Uh, it puts no value to human life. And he already comes out putting very little value to any human life. He's not intimately already familiar with. It. Even then, it's quasi questionable. So I, I think at that end, yeah. Lou Stern was that prison pen pal that was like, yeah, man, I feel how much it sucks, bro. My <laughs> ass hurts too from the getting spanked by weaves of air. Like, Ugh, it's the worst. Yeah. I'm I will say most this. Most our well, lives living in a dominatrix paradise. I, I, will, hey, I will say this though, as far as when it comes to like my, my sort of like wrapping it up thoughts, keeping it specific to Luz Theron and his role and his impact on the world at large. Robert Jordan loves to like 
come at us in a binary, right? And I, I know that's a bad word nowadays, but stick with me for a second. I don't know. Just means that there's two. He loves to show that there's 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 two pieces of this, right? Louis Theron Telemann, at the height of his power, was influential and still fell and still was unable to vanquish the dark, was still unable to take care of things. But Louis Theron Telma reincarnated as a farmer kid out in the middle of nowhere with absolutely nothing but his, you know, pet horse, is able to, through a series of events, rise to a powerful force in the world and eventually you know, seal the dark one away again properly and put that off for another, you know, four or five turnings of the wheel. But I, I think it's, I think it's interesting to see that throughout the entire story, starting with the prologue, starting with all the things, all the historical references we know in the age of legends. I think it's interesting to see how Luz Theron is still powerful and influential, even when he's not trying. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that is that is absolutely fair. I mean, <coughs> his entire kind of fall to the wayside um, seems to be one of the biggest reasons why people now fear the dragon as much as they anticipate and are thankful for the dragon being reborn. Um, I mean, there's the obvious apprehension for, you know, uh, it being a signal of, you know, the end times, like, oh, we're coming to the point where we either all live or we all die, um, which is, is going to be nerve wracking for anybody. But when the reborn figure you're looking for in his last known incarnation also went batshit crazy after being at the top of the world um and you know committed what some would consider the, the ultimate evil it's kind of like how, how how can you be excited uh, excited for it? which i mean we see different people approach it different ways like like moraine approaches it from a well if we guide him in the right direction if we're there for him uh then we can avoid the worst of it but it's going to be bad regardless um, but it's still, you know, this thing where, you know, 3,000 years later, Rand is still fighting the legacy of Luz there and Kinslayer every step of the way. Uh, because again, everybody remembers the guy that was supposed to protect and save the world from the Dark One and went insane and, you know, doomed the world to being plagued by these insane channelers. So, and maybe after the last battle, they remember the guy who fixed it. Yeah, I mean, which also, I mean, I don't know. It begs the question because, like, they're gonna tell story of it, but the only people that witnessed it were Nynaeve and Moraine and Alana. As much as they maybe could have witnessed it, nobody else witnessed it or saw what happened. Right. I mean, thankfully there was a Gleeman right at the door playing bouncer, so that's good. Um. So, you know, he might be able to tell some stories, but there is, you know, the question of how much of what actually transpired were Nynaeve and Moraine and Alana even privy to? I, I think pretty much nothing. I, I think they probably felt Rand pulling a ton of power through them uh, and through Kalendor, but it's a good chance that they really pretty much have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, fair enough with Alana. Fair enough. You're right. <laughs> <clears throat> Alana is gone. But yeah. Her reborn soul. She might remember something. Who knows? Something. Maybe. Maybe she'll be a fan. I keep getting maybe. flashes of, like, this dude in a cave with a shiny sword fighting this other dude. Like, I don't know. It's the craziest <laughs> thing. A couple of chats, bro. Yeah, it's fucking weird. Well, then there's, like, this old guy with, like, this really long mustaches at the door. That's the craziest dude. nightclub ever, bro. Tom was creepy as fuck in that scene. Oh, we went I inside, and like when we came out, it was like years had passed. Well, not actually, but months. Uh, months, months, yeah, yeah. months, yeah, weeks. I think I think at the end of the 
the books, they were like, we've been waiting for like six weeks for them to come out of the cave. People have come up there. They've been gone for two weeks just walking up there. And they say that all they can see is two guys standing motionless. Yeah. Motionless and Shao Gul, the new band to take place on Motionless and White. All right. But, well, yeah. So, Blue Saren's role, he used to be head honcho, and his soul kind of remains head honcho, but it's a lot murkier because it's a lot dirtier world. You know, it's, you're not living in paradise. You're living in para. What the fuck is going on? So, yeah. <laughs> that's another shirt. Perrin decent. Right. More like Perrin, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah, I mean, All right. that's it. Blue Saren's most exciting uh, kind of stories are really Eye of the World, and then the little snippets we get here and there. Indeed, indeed. Thanks, guys, for being here. Thanks for being awesome. You guys are awesome. We're awesome. Uh, thanks for uh, listening to this week's dose of taint. We hope that uh, you leave here just a little bit more insane than you were when you first got here. In the membrane. From all of us. Uh, oh, wait. Did you ever give you a review of the red label? Oh, I no. No, I didn't. Give, give it the, I mean, give, give it the old uh, napkin, the, the cocktail napkin sales pitch right now. One sentence. Five words or less go. Uh, smells great. Tastes like regret. So it's really good. No, <laughs> no, it's like the nose is really good because the nose is like, like butterscotch. Like it's Ooh. it smells like a fucking Werther's original. It smells Ooh. really good, Ooh. and the nose sets you up to expect this like buttery smooth sweetness, and then you taste it, and then it's not, and you're like, where did any of these notes come from? It's Get it through the nose. Get it through the nose. Say, breathe I mean, out of your nose and it's in your mouth. That'll give you a good flavor. It's, it's got a the mouthfeel is like, kind of watery. Um, it does spread over the tongue, but like like water does, like it feels really thin. Right. Um. It kind of tastes like, you know, that real chemically city water (laughs) kind of tastes like that, but like somebody's dunked like their, their, their worn leather work boots in it. That's, that's kind of what you're drinking. You're drinking spicy water out of worn work boots. I love it. All right. Yeah. I don't. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I'm being invaded, so I got to go. From all of us, Savage of Black Tower, I'm Josh Sorbonne Mahal. I'm Andrew Vajon Mahal. And Daniel, our Amakan Mahal, is uh, setting up the fob uh, as we speak. Things are going well. We'll be back next week. But in his infamous words, hope you're having a fantastic morning. In a case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good Eliana! Show. In the tower, you can bring your pain. In the tower. trouble just fitting in in the tower we can help you we will make you see